What's up, guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So SketchUp 2026.1 is here, and with it comes some new features that I thought that we should check out. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so for those of you working with SketchUp 2026, you can find the update by going up to Help, clicking on the option for Check for Update. For me, no update is available. For you, if you had the regular 2026 and haven't updated to 2026.1, it should show up as an option right here. And so this is going to come with a few new features um, that are uh, worth having a discussion about. Note that you can find information about all of the options in the SketchUp 2026.1 release notes, which I'll link to in the notes below this video. And so the first feature that they added inside of this new version is the ability to import PDF files into SketchUp, um, specifically on the PC version. Now, this is something that we've been waiting for for a while, and um, it's a feature that I personally have really been waiting for. And so the way that it works is you can go up to File, Import, and under your supported types, you're going to have the option for PDF file right here. Um, you could also just uh, leave it on all supported types and find PDF files that you have. But the way that this works is if you pick an option right here, it imports the same way that an image comes in, right? So there's an option for use images image, uses texture, and uses new match photo. So if I click on the option for image, click on import right here and bring this in, I can single click and I can place it the same way that I can place image files inside of SketchUp. And so note that this is also going to work for importing PDFs as textures. So if you do a file import and you try to import this on a raw face, right? So we're going to select this floor plan non-vector, pick texture right here, and import it and then click on the surface. Notice how you can bring this in and it's going to convert this to an image and it's going to apply it as a texture to the surface. So this is basically gonna work exactly the same way as importing like a TIFF or a PNG or a JPEG or whatever into SketchUp. Now, one thing that was pointed out in the SketchUp forum and a few other places is this is currently um, just a raster PDF importer, meaning you can bring this in um, and bring this in as a raster file. But if you try to bring it in as a PDF vector graphic, um, it still doesn't bring in the vector stuff in a way where you can uh, edit the edges and take measurements from it. So if you are looking to do that, your best bet is either going to be to use John Brock's PDF importer. And so you could also open the vector PDF in something like a Affinity. And notice how the vector data shows up. And then you can export this as a DWG or a DXF file and import that data into SketchUp like so. You'd still have to scale it, but notice how this all comes in as vector data that you can import. So currently they still don't have this set up to be a vector importer. So this is still an improvement, but Ted from the SketchUp team has noted they're working on a more robust PDF import system in the future. But for now, at least we have raster PDF import in SketchUp and desktop, which is something we've been waiting for for a long time. So almost there, but a little further to go. Okay, so next up we have a new feature that makes transferring between between versions a lot easier. So if we go to Window, Preferences, notice how there's now an option in here to import and export your preferences. So for example, if you have like custom keyboard shortcuts or something like that set up, now you can export those and then import them in a future version. So you would just export your preferences DAT file into a folder and notice how there's options to put both your shortcuts and your file locations in there. Then when you're done, you can export that DAT file and next time you move to a new version of SketchUp, you can just go find that and bring that in so that you don't have to reset up all of your keyboard shortcuts um, the next time that you transfer versions. So they've also added a new mode to the tape measure tool that allows you to set guide points. So when you activate the tape measure tool, we've already been able to add line guides in here, right? So you can add guides based on different lines in your space. Well, if you tap the control key again, notice what this does is this goes into a point mode right here. And so this allows you to set points based on a point that you have right now. So um, this allows you to set guide points that act basically the same way as the uh, guidelines. Uh, but this is more of a point option like so. So um, I do think this is something that I'm going to use. I think the ability to add guide points has been something we've needed for a while. So um, that's definitely a nice quality of life upgrade because I do think we'll use it. Remember that if you do have a bunch of guide points in here, when you go to edit and delete your guides, those will all get deleted. So if you ever need to get rid of them, you can do that that way. But we do now have the ability to add guide points, which I do think is a plus. 
Okay, and then finally, the rest of the updates in this version are all AI related and specifically related to the AI assistant and the AI rendering. And so let's talk about the AI assistant first and then we can talk about the rendering. So the AI assistant is a new feature that's rolled out that basically gives you the ability to do things like asking questions to get help in SketchUp. So um, this is basically AI help inside of SketchUp. And notice how it gives you some kind of sample questions, but you can click in here and it'll go through, it'll think, it'll search the knowledge base, then it'll give you an answer. Um, now for me, I mean, I, I don't really find this to be especially more helpful than just doing a search inside of the knowledge base, but I guess this probably does a better job of compiling the answers like so. So say I wanted to know something about components, like why would I use components in my model? Question mark. If I ask that question, it's going to go through search the knowledge base and then put an answer together, right? Like you would use components for um, reusability, right? Which is the right answer as well as consistency, meaning all of the uh, components will update at the same time. So it gives you a pretty good answer in here. So if you're looking for an answer to your technical questions, you can ask those using the AI assistant. Now, something to be aware of is now SketchUp's AI stuff all works on a credit system. So if you look in the lower left-hand corner, there's an option here for credits right now. And so you get a certain number of credits with your pro version. I think it's like 150 or something like that. Um, if you need more credits, which we'll talk about in a second, you can do that with their AI subscription, which gives you more credits. And so you can find out more about the AI subscription here. And so most of the AI stuff that SketchUp is going to be doing moving forward, I would imagine is going to revolve around credits. So a render is going to cost five credits. The generate object is going to cost 30 credits. The AI help isn't going to cost any credits. And so if you do need additional credits, there's a SketchUp AI subscription that you can get. And I believe that if you go in here and you need more credits, you can click on request access. So I'm not clear on if that sends a message to the SketchUp team or if that just, or if that just adds this to your account right here. I'm not hundred percent clear on that, but this is how you get into your AI credits. Um, but within the AI assistant, we also now have the ability to generate models. And so you can generate a model from a prompt or you can place an image. And so let's say that we wanted to match an image. So let's go find a picture of a chair. And so we'll just drag the chair image in here, and then we'll just click on the option to generate model. Now note that when you click on the option for generate model, that is gonna use 30 of your credits in order to go through and start the generation. And this can take a little while. This tends to spin for a minute or two before it gives you anything. So um, there is definitely a wait before that image comes out, but then when you're done, it's going to give you an AI model based on the image that you gave it. Okay, and so now it's gonna tell us if our model is ready yes or no. And if you want to see some additional information about the generation, you can click on the drop down right here, but I'm going to go ahead and download this into my model and we're going to see what it came up with. And honestly, for this chair, it actually did a pretty good job of generating something that's fairly usable. Now I have the same problem with the object generation here that I have with most AI generation functions. My problem is if I do need to make any changes, it's pretty much impossible, right? So um, if I look at the mesh, it's actually a decent mesh. So if I look at my hidden geometry right here, um, this is not a bad mesh overall. My only issue with this is as long as it gives me a good generation, we're in good shape. But if I need to make any changes, adjust the textures, anything like that, that's going to be very difficult to do. So, I mean, I could come in here and if I override all of this, right? So if I go into my materials, we're going to wipe this old material out and say that we put like a wood material on here. Um, it does a pretty decent, this looks pretty good. I mean, the, the way that textures are applied to a AI models like this can be a little bit frustrating because I have zero control over the way that the texture applies. But if I'm just looking for a background model, this could be a good option. Um, but I do know that my quality results very wildly based on the image that I bring in. But let's say we try this again with a new object right here. And one thing to note about this, by the way, is if you wanna go back and find the things that you've done previously, um, there's gonna be a gallery option 
in here. So, and you, and you can see how I tested this with another model that didn't necessarily do so good, but at least we have access to it, right? So I can download this older model that's in here. So um, you will be able to access the model, this models that you've generated in the past. Um, if you decide that you want to do that by going into the gallery function, but let's say that we tried a different object. And if I'm being honest, I have never figured out if a prompt with something like this actually helps or not. Um, the, the reality is I have no clue if giving it like additional words is going to help make that model better or not. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Does it get any better if you work with a prompt or do you find just dropping an image in and saying generate object works better? I'd love to hear your uh, your results on something like that. See, and so this is exactly what I was talking about. And by the way, it does also take a while to generate the model. But if we look at this, like, first of all, I can't like rotate around it at all to see it. So I have to bring it into my model to really see anything about it. But this generation doesn't look anything like this generation. I don't have any options other than just start over. So um, you're basically just throwing something out there and seeing if the result that you get is something you actually like. So I'm not a massive fan of that because there's no way to like dial this in. Like I much prefer, like this looks nothing like the sofa that I uploaded. So um, like I said, your results vary wildly. Um, it seems like the simpler shape, like this chair, it did a pretty good job, but the rest of these have not really been all that good and they don't give you a whole lot of control. So I know this is something that's going to improve in the future, but it's kind of one of those things for me where um, at, at the moment, I think other engines like Meshi or something like that are going to generate better results. So it's definitely something you can try out. I'd love to hear what your results look like in the comments down below. And so they've also updated the AI render function. So SketchUp Diffusion is now called AI Render, which makes sense because they're probably going to be using more models than just Diffusion in order to generate images in the future. Um, so, I mean, that just makes sense, right? Because there's a bunch of models that are out there. Um, but let's say that we use this Sunshine Canyon house um, from Max Achofsky and just want to generate a render. Well, now when we do that, if we click on this option, it's going to pop up a window that looks a little bit different than the SketchUp Diffusion used to look. But a lot of those um, a lot of those options are still in there. So if I click on this little button right here, notice how there's presets. Um, and those presets have always been there. There's an auto, there's um, physical model, exterior photo, whatever, right? So say we wanted this to be an exterior photo. And so we're just going to click on the option to generate, um, and we'll go ahead and see what it spits out. I'm having this weird error right now where if I try to put text in here, it's actually giving me an error message from my prompt. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but if I just put the image in here and try to generate it, um, it all works. So we'll see what comes out of this. And uh, yeah, just note this is going to take uh, five of your credits. So it's going to give us three options right here. And so while this does do a better job now of respecting your model geometry than it did in the past, you still have kind of that same issue, right? It's coming in here. And for example, like I had these bronze panels um, or copper panels down below, and it's kind of changing those. And also the material of this model is something that's supposed to be more of a rusted metal rather than um, a wood. So maybe we'll try it again where it's a little bit closer so the engine can kind of recognize that. The other thing that you might think about doing is you might think about toggling your edges off like so. And we'll try to run this again. So if you do want to run it again, what you can do is you can just click on the option to re-get the image. So re-import the active model viewport into Diffusion itself. Um, and we'll do the same thing. And maybe we'll toggle our respect model geometry up. And I'm going to try dropping that prompt in again and see what it does. Um, but now we're going to click on generate. See how it gives me that issue right here. Maybe if the prompt gets smaller, this will be a little bit better. Yeah, for some reason, it is not liking my text prompts, which is really weird. So we'll just leave this on exterior photorealistic, or we could even swap it to auto. So we'll click on the option for generate and we'll see what this comes up with. Okay, and so I will say for this angle, this did a much better job of picking up um, the materiality in here. And I, I will also say that this is doing a much better job of respecting my model geometry. So one of the things that you might pay a little bit of attention to is you might try to pay attention to that respect model geometry option in here because this is actually a decent 
render based on this image right here. So, and then if we click across the options, let's see, it gives you a couple different options. And honestly, I feel like these are pretty good. Um, so these did a much better job. So it might just be a question of just respecting that model geometry a little bit more with the sliders right here, because you can see how, and even this did a better job than diffusion used to, right? But there are some things that it kind of changed, but with these images, I feel like this did a much I, I feel like this is a lot closer to the kind of thing that I would want, like at least for a look and feel over here, this render I can actually kind of live with. So I'm pretty happy about that, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Are you working with these new features and how are they working? Now there are a couple other options in here. Like for example, say that there's something that you want to change. What we might do is we might mask out a portion of it by clicking on this option right here. And I'm going to mask out these two areas and tell it what I should change. So what this does is this lets me pick an area and give it directions. So in this case, I'm going to mask both of these and we'll tell it replace these areas with a rusted corrugated metal panel with vertical orientation. And we'll click on the option to generate and we'll see what that does. So this is going to upload this and it's going to try to make a change to just these areas right here. And it should give me three options over here on the right um, to uh, review. So we'll just let this work for a little bit. This does take a little while to work in the background um, for sure. So that is something to kind of be aware of is um, it's going to take a little while between each image in order for it to uh, give you the changed results right here. So I'm not necessarily a huge fan of the results I got with that. So this is obviously something that's still in progress, but I will say these results right here are way better than what you used to get with Diffusion. So it's nice to see this moving in the right direction. And notice how you have your history of your other things that you've generated in here as well. So if you wanna go back and look at older images or whatever, you can do that using this tool right here. So you do have the gallery in order to view your older stuff. All right. So that should give you an idea of everything that's contained in 2026.1. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about these changes and adjustments? I'd love to hear about the quality of the renders you're able to get out of the rendering function. Um, but I'd also like to hear what you think about the PDF import tool and the other stuff as well. And remember that the SketchUp team does read the comments on some of these new release videos. So if you do have any thoughts about any of this stuff, feel free to leave them down below. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.